Okay, well, hello. Glad you're back. Uh, glad I'm back. Again, my name is James Frasca. I am a video production specialist here at Video Guys. I typically run our shows uh, from behind the scenes, but today we have Adam running our show. And when you guys call and ask questions or send us emails, you're typically reaching out to uh, me and I'm the one that is responding to them or somebody else on our team. So just wanted to give us a, a quick introduction. Uh, this show, again, as a reminder, is just, hey, what questions have you guys asked us the most over the past month? And let's answer them in front of everybody. So there are multiple ways that you can contact us and ask us questions. Uh, first and foremost, you can give us a call at 800-323-2325. Um, you'll most likely speak to Jamie and... Uh, she will uh, send it to me if there is a technical question. She can answer any shipping questions you might have, um, so on and so forth. Another way that you can contact us is through our email, sales at videoguys.com. And if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook right now, uh, you can comment on the video. Uh, YouTube is at videoguys and Facebook is videoguys.com. You can also message us on Twitter or tweet at us at video guys. And like I mentioned in the pre-show, you can contact us on our website. That is not a bot automated answering machine or chat bubble. That is always going to be a real person. So there are tons of ways that you can get in contact us in contact with us. And in fact, we encourage it. So let's get into it. Now, this is definitely something that has been coming up more and more frequently, and especially in the last month or so with the Yellow Live in-stream announcement. So the question is, do you really believe in vertical video? And the answer is absolutely, unequivocally, yes, we do. Now, I know that you are seeing that we are still presenting in horizontal. Horizontal is not going anywhere, but that does not mean that vertical isn't a thing. It absolutely is. On Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok, all of these uh, platforms have vertical videos, and I am guilty of scrolling through those vertical videos for hours and hours on end. So it absolutely is a thing. And the reason that we've noticed uh, an influx in questions about this is because YOLO Live just... Uh, released the in-stream, uh, the in-stream not too long ago. And the YOLO Live in-stream is a device similar to the other YOLO Live products that allows you to do multiple camera switching on Instagram and TikTok. And I need to emphasize that they are the only ones that are doing this. No other product on the market allows you to switch between multiple cameras live on Instagram and TikTok. So this is something that is kind of huge right now and blowing up. We have them in stock, so I would say take advantage of it. Uh, and if you're familiar with the, uh, the YOLO Box family, whether or not it's the YOLO Box, the YOLO Box Pro, or the YOLO Box Mini, you will understand this, um, this device and pick it up very quickly. It's the same kind of lower third, same kind of inputs. You can do two HDMI one USB, you can connect to the internet through Wi-Fi or Ethernet. It even takes a 4G SIM card slot. So there are tons of ways that you can connect to the internet and be able to do your live streaming and stand out. And again, going back to, do I think that live streaming uh, is going to be switching to vertical? I would say yes. From a personal experience, we saw 21 pilots a couple weeks ago and all of their show, all of their screens in the concert hall were all vertical. There were no horizontal screens. And it just really is a way to connect to a younger audience and make your video stand out. So again, I wanna emphasize that the YOLO Live InStream is the only product on the market that allows you to switch between multiple cameras live on Instagram and TikTok. So definitely check it out. Now, I will say that there is there has been some concern brought up, maybe not concern is the right word, but a caveat. Um, you do have to rotate your camera 90 degrees in order to be able to connect your camera to the in-stream. 
Um, as you can see on our table right here, well, it's actually on a tripod, we have one of our handy cams rotated 90 degrees. Now, there is no way to currently crop into a horizontal screen. Yolo Live has said that there is a firmware in the works to be able to do that. And this is why I say it's not really a caveat. If you have the ability to just simply rotate your DSLR or your Handycam 90 degrees to be able to have it vertical, I would suggest doing that over cropping it simply because if you crop, doesn't matter what it is, if you crop it, you are going to be sacrificing uh, resolution. So if you have the ability with your tripod to be able to just rotate your camera, I'm going to recommend that you do that. But if you don't have the ability, YOLO Live has got you covered in a future firmware update. And to prove that we do think that this is a thing, we actually did a little tournament in our parking lot not too long ago, and we used the uh, YOLO Live in-stream to post a video to our Instagram live and uh, show some warehouse employees playing uh, a game of cornhole, and we recorded the entire setup and made a little pro product spotlight video. So we're going to play that video for you right now. Introducing the YOLO Live InStream, the revolutionary all-in-one switcher encoder built specifically for vertical streaming platforms, including Instagram and TikTok. This device is a great addition to the YOLO Live family and product line, and it shares many of the same base features. Let's take a look at the hardware. The YOLO Live InStream allows for two HDMI cameras and one USB camera to be plugged into it for switching. You can also add pre-canned videos and image overlays on the SD card for even more production value. The YOLO Live InStream has three modes of connecting to the internet, Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and even a SIM card allowing for streaming on the go in any location. The InStream can mix any audio coming from the HDMI cameras, as well as offering both a line in and mic in 3.5 millimeter jack. The SD card slot can be used for uploading graphics and pre-recorded videos, as well as recording your current stream. The in-stream is perfect for allowing you to add a switcher to your live streams on platforms like Instagram and TikTok. Being able to stream at 1080, 60p allows for your streams to be sharp and clean. And with a bright 600 nit display and touchscreen control, the in-stream can be used by anyone, anywhere with ease. Order your in-stream today. Wasn't that a great little video? I think I did a pretty good job on it, not gonna lie. <laughs> anyway, that is the YOLO Live InStream in a nutshell. You can give us a call at 800-323-2325 and we can talk about this in more depth. Uh, but we're gonna move on to the next question. So this is something that has been asked, um, not necessarily with an influx recently, but it, it does come up. How do I become a new tech TriCaster certified operator? And the, the simple answer is go to New Tech's website and they have something that they offer called New Tech University. <clears throat> Excuse me. And these are classes that you can take online in order to get certified to use uh, New Tech products. Uh, not just the TriCaster, they offer them on three play systems and capture cast systems and uh, NDI in general. So. It's not just for the TriCaster, but they do have several class, classes dedicated just to the TriCaster. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go to their website right now and show you just a couple of the classes that they offer. <clears throat> Whoops, I forgot to go back to the first page. Give me one second here. Do, do, do. Okay, so to start off, you can see that they have several courses and classes available for you to take. I think there's about 10 in total. Um, I'm just gonna talk about the uh, ones on this front page. So this is uh, on the three play, which is a replay device that allows you to uh, replay videos, be able to play them in slow motion, um, talk about them, comment on them. Very important for um, if you're doing a sports production, especially. Um, and this is something that uh, is separate from a TriCaster, so it's awesome that they offer classes on this as well. Uh, there's live production with TriCaster classes. Um, this course specifically goes into 
Um, not a super in-depth dive into how to operate a TriCaster, but it will explain how to do the very basics and general ideas and give you the fundamentals for then you to be able to go and play with your own TriCaster. You know, explaining what the MEs are, how many inputs do you have on your TriCaster, um, how many layers do you have, how many macros can you make, can you make, it teaches you how to make simple macros, where's your DSKs, how do you use your, um, your keyboard, your two stripe board or one stripe board. It's, it's, I don't want to, I keep saying basic. It's not a basic overview, but it is a dive into it. They have another class that specifically focuses on automation. Uh, and I would say that is more of a deep dive into what the TriCaster really can do. Whereas this one is uh, a general overview. Um, it's still very good course. And then personally, my favorite class that they offer is the NDI and Performance Media Networking class. And this is huge because it doesn't pertain just to new tech. New tech is offering a class that you can take and be proficient in NDI for any NDI product. It shows you the fundamentals of how NDI works, how IP works, um, how to set up network switches, how to access uh, devices that are connected via NDI anywhere. And it's just overall my favorite class. I just took it not too long ago, actually. And I learned so much because a little bit of background with me, I come from a background of narrative filmmaking, not necessarily live streaming. And this class alone out of the classes that I've taken so far has been the most helpful. And I highly recommend it. Even if you don't have a new tech device. One thing that I also wanted to mention with the uh, New Tech University is that they are constantly, constantly updating all of their classes and adding new classes. And a perfect example of that is with the New Tech Capture Cast class. Now, the New Tech Capture Cast only came out just about a month ago. And on day one, they had this six hour long class available for consumers and end users to be able to use and learn how to operate the system in depth. There was no, you know, we don't know what exactly it does. They said, we know exactly what it does and here's how you can learn how to use it. Please take advantage of New Tech University. And now I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint. And another thing that I wanted to mention real quick about this is I mentioned that it's about six to seven hours for the classes. Now, personally, again, because we have taken the classes here, we've noticed that it actually takes closer to 10 to 12 hours in order to complete the courses. Because of course, there's certain times that you're not gonna know, um, you're not gonna pick up on the first watch through of a five minute video. You might wanna watch that video once or twice, maybe even three times. You're probably gonna wanna take notes while you're doing it. And so from our personal experience, we say that these courses take maybe 10 to 12 hours to get through, and then it's three hours for the exam. And speaking of the exam, it's a 50 question multiple choice exam. And as long as you get an 80 or above on your exam, New Tech will send you a diploma certifying that you do know everything in that course. Can't, can't stress it enough. Please take advantage of New Tech University in learning how to use all of their products. <clears throat> Excuse me. So another thing that has been a little bit more frequently is how are the new Netgear M4250 switches different than the ones you have been recommending? And I wanna say right off the bat that this comes off maybe a little bit misleading. It's not that we're no longer recommending the rack mountable M4250s. We absolutely are. We are just saying that there is a new smaller option that is specifically designed for smaller studios or being portable. So with these new smaller uh, M4250s, they are smaller, of course, and they are uh, much quieter. So if you're in a small studio and you can only have your switch just off camera, you don't have to worry about it as much uh, with making noise and being picked up by your microphone. You know, we're fortunate that in our studio, our network switch is, you know, maybe 10 or 15 feet away from me. 
so I don't have to worry about that. But not everybody has uh, that luxury and new tech, uh, new tech, Netgear has listened and said, okay, we got something for you. It's gonna work and I love it. <clears throat> so there are currently two models that are on the market right now for these desktop uh, M4250s. And really the only difference between these two models is the number of SFP ports that you need. And if you need S SFP plus, and the bigger, even bigger takeaway is the TPD, which stands for total power delivery. Um, when, you're, when you're hooking up devices and they're using PoE, something like a camera is probably gonna use somewhere around 25 watts. So with the uh, switch on your left, that one can handle maybe four or five cameras, whereas the, uh, the switch on the right can handle you know, quite a few more. But I, I do want to stress that that doesn't mean that you can't use all eight ports that the one on the left offers. You absolutely can. Um, we're we're going to show you a little bit of a demo a little bit later, but we intentionally set up this controller um, with power being supplied from a power cable that came with this unit, and it is still able to communicate to our switch using our uh, Ethernet cable here. So I just want to stress that even if your devices aren't being powered by your switch, as long as they are connected to the switch and powered by something else, they can still communicate to everything on the switch. It doesn't require you know, hardly any power in order to do that. It may just not be able to uh, fully power it. So that is you know, just, just something that we wanted to point out. Here is a list of all of the network switches that we offer right now. Uh, and I want to emphasize that the top two models in this chart are, in fact, the new desktop models. And the bottom three are the ones that we have uh, previously been selling and still continue to offer to our uh, customers. And again, main differences in these is how many ports do you need? How many SFP ports do you need? Do you need PoE Plus? Do you need PoE Plus Plus? And then again, how much total power delivery do you need? You know, going back to that desktop one uh, that has 110 watts uh, uh, in the top chart that you can see there, you know, that, that's great for four or five cameras. Whereas if you look all the way down at the bottom of this chart, you'll see that the GSM 4212UX model has 720 watts available. You can have like 20 cameras on this thing and never ever worry about, uh, do I need to have external power? So it really just, what do you need? You want to make sure that you're future proofing yourself, but at the same time, there is such a thing as too much. <clears throat> and just in case you don't really know what a network switch is, uh, Netgear put out a great new video. It talks about um, the new desktop models. And so it's about a minute and a half long and we're going to watch it. Introducing two new additions to the powerful AV line of M4250 switches. Featuring all the power of the AV line, now in a new desktop form factor. Ideal for conference rooms, mobile studios, and more, with placement behind a screen, on the wall, or under a table. Plus, simplify your AV multicast deployments with Netgear IGMP Plus for out-of-the-box functionality. The revolutionary AV user interface contains pre-configured profiles for all major audio, video, and lighting protocols. With automatic multi-switch configuration and profile-based setups, setup is a snap with no need to hire an IT professional. PoE Plus functionality allows power over Ethernet connection to a range of devices for data and power over a single cable for up to 30 watts per port and a budget of either 110 or 220 watts. The powerful M4250 AV line of 1 gig AV over IP compact desktop switches. Okay, so that was a great little video on the Netgear M4250 switches. We're going to move on to the next question. So this is another one that we get asked all the time. It's not necessarily an influx uh, as of recently, but something that we do get asked. And it's, how do you properly store and back up your live productions? 
and we're going to talk about what we do and other options that you can do even if you don't want to do what we do. What I will start off by saying is that we highly, highly recommend that you always record at least two copies. So if something happens to the first one, you always have that backup copy. So first, built-in storage. Whether you have a TriCaster or a Wirecast gear or whatever switcher you're using, there's a good chance that it has internal storage that you can record directly to. In our studio, we are using a TriCaster TC1 Pro. It comes with four terabytes of internal storage and we record every single show on our TriCaster. And one thing that I wanted to note is these are uncompressed files that are recorded to the TriCaster. So four terabytes is a lot of space, don't get me wrong, but our 20 to 30 minute videos on average are about 35 to 40 gigabytes. So you are gonna to wanna to make sure that you are you know, periodically cleaning out your TriCaster and compressing those files and putting them on an archive server of some sort. Um, so yeah, that's what we do in our studio. That's one way that we have a copy of everything. Another thing that you can use is an attached storage system, uh, including USB and SSD hard drives, uh, like an external drive that you can plug into the front or back of your system for external storage. Now, with that, you can use something like Lacie or you know um, SanDisk Professional Extended uh, uh, external storage drives. You can absolutely use those, but depending on what format again that you're recording in, um, you're going to want to make sure that you a have enough space and b that your write and read speed are fast enough on your card. So definitely make sure that you are taking those into consideration. Uh, thirdly, you can use on-camera storage, uh, whether it's an SD card, a CFast card, or a compact flash card. Uh, so in our studio, we use two studio cameras and one PTZ camera. We cannot record uh, to our PTZ camera, but our two studio cameras do have the ability to record to an SD card or a compact flash card. And so that is another way that you can record at least your isolated um, video files. <clears throat> and lastly is something that we do, which is our second way of uh, recording all of our shows. You can have an on-camera monitor or slash recorder like the Ninja 5. Um, in our studio, we actually use an Atomos uh, Sumo, SE, uh, Sumo 19 SE, and we use it for dual purpose actually, because again, it's a monitor. I use that as a confidence monitor. I'm reading my PowerPoint slides basically off of that. And at the same time, it is recording our entire show. So we will take the drive out of that uh, right after the show ends, and we will compress that to an H.264 file and then archive it on our computers. So these are just a few ways that you can um, you know, properly back up your live productions. And again, I wanna emphasize you wanna always have at least two uh, backups. <clears throat> Another question that has been coming up extremely recently is, I have the Atomos Ninja 5. How does Atomos Connect allow me to stream directly from that? So Atomos came out with the Connect family not too long ago, and the Connect family allows you to be able to stream directly to a CDN of your choice, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, um, or an RTMP. And with the Atomos Connect, you do need to have either a Ninja or a Ninja 5, and then it just connects to the back of it like any other um, Atomos uh, Connect, uh, Atomos module piece like the, uh, the charger or uh, the SD converter, uh, SDI converter, excuse me. Uh, so that is what the Atomos Connect allows you to do. And speaking of the Connect, let's talk about the Connect family. So the Atomos Connect is a add-on to an existing Ninja 5 or Ninja 5 Plus. Then there's also the Zato Connect, which is a monitor slash streamer, it does the same exact thing as the Atomos Connect, allows you to stream uh, directly to a CDN of your choice. And then again, of course, we have the Shogun Connect, which is a seven inch monitor 
that allows you to do the same thing. And I mentioned a little while ago that I have a background in narrative filmmaking, and I just wanna say that these products are super cool because not only do they allow you to stream directly to a, a CDN of your choice, with their uh, partnership with Frame.io, it allows you to say if you're on a commercial, you're shooting a commercial and you finish recording your clip, it will automatically send it to Frame.io's uh, data center. Uh, you know, it's like a OneDrive and it will send a proxy file of your video to that, uh, to Frame.io. And then anybody that's connected to the internet will be able to access that and be able to download it onto their computer and start editing in Premiere instantly, literally 30 seconds after you stop uh, recording. And that is huge because consider, you know, a couple of years ago when I was in narrative filmmaking, we would have to wait until the end of the day, maybe even the next day to be able to upload all of our data to a centralized computer and then have our editors access it. This cuts out that portion. You can literally save like 12 hours and you know, time is money when you're doing this. You can start editing with the proxy file and as you're editing those proxy files, then you can upload your full res uh, clips and Premiere will automatically swap the proxy files for the full res files with uh, time code and time syncing with their uh, air sync uh, te technology. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, Another question that we get asked uh, somewhat frequently is, can one PTZ controller control multiple PTZ cameras? And the answer is absolutely yes. Yes, you can. And not only yes, can you control multiple cameras with one controller. Again, going back to NDI, you can control multiple cameras from one controller that are from different companies. So we're gonna do a little live demo right, uh, real quick. And I have a bird dog controller right here. And I have a table right there that has three different cameras on it from three different companies. And if I hit camera two on here, I can control that bird dog P200. Love the bird dog P200s. And no problem. But that is a bird dog camera with a bird dog controller. But if I wanted to go use the new tech controller, I'm just going to simply hit four and camera and now i am controlling the new tech camera with just two buttons on this controller i'm able to control the new tech camera uh, that is the ptc3 and then also we have a ptz optics ndi 12x zoom ptz camera over there on that table as well Oop, i'm sorry i hit the wrong button uh five camera oh okay why is this one not wanting to? Oh, there it goes. I was just hitting the wrong button. It's live. I'm sorry. Camera five. There we go. We have a PTZ optics camera that you can see moving. And we'll go back to the PowerPoint. So this is kind of the workflow that you can have in any situation. Uh, this is what our workflow is. We have a, um, a <laughs> NDI controller connected to your network switch. And then you can have your network switch connected to any amount of cameras um, that so long as you have enough ports on your switch and be able to control them from one uh, controller as long as it's IP controlled controller and an IP controlled um, camera they should be able to communicate to each other and it doesn't matter and again that's why that NDI course with new tech is super super uh, important and I highly recommend that you watch it because I wouldn't have known this beforehand and now I do, and it just makes life easy. <clears throat> so that's all that I have uh, for this episode of Ask the Video Guys. We went a little long today. I think we're about 30 minutes, but I feel like these were great questions and I really wanted to answer all of them and give you not just a quick overview, but I'll go a little bit more in depth. So my name is James Frasca. I am a video production specialist here at Video Guys. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can subscribe to us on Facebook. Check out our Instagram. Uh, am I missing anything? I think Twitter is in there too. You can also give us a phone, uh, give us a call at 800-323-2325. And that's pretty much all that I have. 
Uh, next week, Gary will be back, and uh, we'll see you then. I'm going to do Gary's signature trademark. Peace. Video Guys is available Monday through Friday. Give us a call at 1-800-323-2325. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram to stay connected with all of our updates. And you can like us on Facebook. Keep an eye out for our live videos, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.